Hello, and welcome to the Chief Architect Bootcamp webinar. My name is Kelly, and I will be teaching the class today. I want to start by saying thank you for taking the time to attend this class and learn more about Chief Architect. If you already own Chief Architect, feel free to follow along with me during the class. If you don't have a copy of Chief Architect, you can download a free trial from our website at chiefarchitect.com. This class is designed for people who are new to Chief Architect and are not sure where to get started. This includes people who just bought the program or people who are using the trial version. I'm going to start this class at the very beginning, creating a new plan. From there I'll move on to drawing out walls, creating multiple floors, generating different roof styles, as well as placing cabinets and other objects into the plan. When you've finished watching this class, you should have a good idea of how Chief Architect works to create your own custom designs. Let's go ahead and get started. When you first start using Chief Architect, it's best to understand the user interface or how you're going to interact with the program. To start with, we have our menu system up at the top. These include options for File, Edit, Build, Terrain. The File menu contains several different file management options, including the ability to save or save your file as, as well as print or send your documents to a layout. The Build menu contains many different tools that you'll need to build the model. This includes walls, doors, windows, roofs, and many other things. We will be spending a lot of time in the Build menu. One of the last options in the menu bar is the Help menu. We at Chief Architect try to provide you with a lot of resources that you can use to help you understand and learn about Chief Architect. Under this Launch Help option, this will give you access to our help system. Our documentation team has spent countless hours designing a very comprehensive help system to help you understand how each of the different tools in Chief Architect work. The View Tutorial Guide option is going to bring up a PDF document that covers a lot of information. This course is based off of the Tutorial Guide. The Tutorial Guide includes several chapters that cover several different topics and includes review questions at the end to help you retain what it is you've learned in the previous chapter. The View Reference Manual option is a PDF version of what's in the built-in help program. This is a great resource if you want to have a physical copy of the help that you can write notes down and things of that nature, although the built-in help program does have a built-in search which helps you to find topics more easily. Below the menu bar, we have our toolbars. These contain some of the most commonly used tools in the program. This doesn't contain every tool in the program, but most of the ones that are most commonly used are going to be listed in the toolbars. You'll notice we have several different icons here in our toolbar. If I, for example, click on this wall icon, that's going to show me my straight wall tools. Now, Chief Architect has a parent-child tool relationship. And what I mean by that is this tool that's listed here on the toolbar, that is the parent tool. But in the tool palette, this option here, we have several different child tools listed underneath it. We have our straight exterior wall, straight interior walls, foundation walls, etc., etc. Each of these tools on the toolbar has child tools available to them. These parent tools will tell you what type of child tools are listed underneath them. For example, under my straight wall tools, choose my straight exterior wall. To draw a wall in, I'm simply going to click and drag in the drawing space and then I'll release my mouse. This big white area here, this is our drawing space. This is where anything that you create in the plan or create in the model is going to be drawn and displayed. This is also where you would generate camera views. If I click on this wall that I've created, notice it gets highlighted and I get some icons that show up around the object that I have selected. Each of the icons mean different things. The ones to keep in mind here are the Center edit handle here is my move edit handle. That will allow me to click and drag and move whatever object I have selected up and down. The square icons on the end of this object allow me to change the length of the object. I also have this edit handle here, this rotate edit handle, that allows me to rotate or change the angle of the object that I have selected. Down on the bottom of the screen, we have a toolbar known as the Edit Toolbar. 
This is going to allow me to edit or modify the object that I have selected. Each of these tools on the toolbar is specific to the context of the object that I have selected. If I had, for example, a cabinet placed in the plan, and I select that cabinet, notice down on my edit toolbar, I have different tools than if I had the wall selected. Also notice if I have nothing selected, that edit toolbar is empty. The edit toolbar will only display something when you have an object selected. If no object is selected, then the edit toolbar will be blank. If I select an object, one of the most important tools you'll ever see in Chief Architect is this icon that looks like an open door, and it says Open Object. When I click on that Open Object button, that's going to bring up the dialog for that object. This is going to bring up a specification dialog that I can use to modify this wall or cabinet or whatever object I happen to have selected. Dialogues are broken up into two main components and an optional third component. On the left, you'll have a list of all of the different panels that we have in the dialog. Each of these panels represent different sections of information that you can modify. For example, if I go to the roof panel, this will allow me to modify the roof properties for the particular wall that I have selected. The wall types panel will allow me to change what wall type I'm using with this panel. This middle section here, this is where the actual changes can take place. So if I go, for example, back to the roof panel, I can change this wall from a hip style wall to a full gable style wall, or vice versa. Several, but not all, dialogues will also have a preview of whatever object it is that you have selected. What's nice about this is as I make changes to the individual settings for whatever object I have selected, this preview will update to show me what the new values are going to be. If I click the Cancel button, that's going to make Chief Architect forget whatever changes I've made. Once I've made my changes and I'm happy with them, I can click OK, and that will keep those changes that I have added to that wall or whatever object I have selected. Now that we've covered the basics of the Chief Architect user interface, it's time to start actually creating our model. To do that, I'm going to start by drawing my exterior walls. I'm going to go to my Straight Wall Tools and click on Straight Exterior Wall. To draw a new wall, you start by simply clicking with your left mouse and dragging, and then release your mouse. When you're first drawing your model, it's important to get the general shape of the model correct, and then you can start worrying about dimensions. So right now, I don't have any dimensions showing, and I'm simply just clicking and dragging and drawing out the general shape of what my model is going to look like. Notice once I've connected these walls together, Chief Architect automatically generates exterior dimensions for me. Now that I have these dimensions, I can use them to put my walls in the proper place that I want them to be at. To do that, I'm going to move my walls using the associated dimensions. And what I mean by that is this top wall here. I want it to be 42 feet long. Now I could select this wall and click on this dimension and type in a new value. That would extend this wall one way or another, but what I like to do is instead of changing the individual wall, I like to select and move the wall that's going to actually change position. So I'm going to select this wall here, knowing that this is the wall that I want to move out to be 42 feet. So with that wall selected, I'm going to click on this dimension right here, type in 42 and my foot marker, and hit enter on my keyboard, and that's going to move that wall out to be exactly 42 feet from this wall here, which also means that this horizontal wall, this top horizontal wall, is now 42 feet long as well. I'm going to go through the rest of these walls here to get them in the proper positions. So I'm going to select this wall here, and this wall needs to be 38 feet 4 inches from this top wall here. So I'll come over here to the associated dimension, click on that and type in 38 feet 4, and hit enter on my keyboard. And I'll go through the rest of this process. I'll select this wall here, set this to be the value I want, 13 feet 4, hit enter on my keyboard, 
select this wall here, and I'm going to click on this dimension here and set its dimension as well. And now I have my walls exactly positioned where I want them to be. Something else important happened when I connected these walls together. Not only did I get these dimensions that show up along the outside edges here, but I also have a new object created. This is called the room object. And so I can click in here into this room object and I can open it up for specification. And if I go to the structure panel, you'll notice I have a ceiling value set there of 97 and an eighth. You'll notice up until now I haven't done anything to set the heights of my walls. Chief Architect doesn't think in terms of individual wall heights, but is an overall room height. So when I set a ceiling height in this room for 97 and an eighth of an inch, what that means is Chief Architect is going to take the walls that are attached to that room or that make up that room and have them rise up to meet at 97 and an eighth of an inch. So they're going to go up to that ceiling height and stop at that ceiling height. If I wanted to change this value to be a higher value, for example, if I wanted to change this to 9 foot ceilings instead of 8 foot ceilings, I can type in a new value in the rough ceiling or finished ceiling value, and that will raise the walls up to that new value. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now that I've generated one room and generated my exterior walls, I can now start to use my interior walls to detail out my interior. To do that, I'm going to grab my straight interior wall tool. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to start about right here and drag my mouse across. And notice when I do that, I have a couple of new dimensions that show up, but I also now have this area divided into two separate rooms. So I now have two separate room objects that I can then go and modify further. I'm going to add some more rooms to my plan. Now I have some new rooms added to my plan, and I'm going to detail these out a little bit more. For example, I can select this room here, and I want this room to be my kitchen room. So what I can do is I can come down here to the Open Object button on the Edit toolbar, and I can change the room type from Unspecified to Kitchen. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I can do the same thing with the rest of these rooms. So I'll select this room, make it a living room, and I'll go ahead and make a room type for each of these individual rooms. Now that I've generated these interior rooms and given them all names, I can now use dimensions to move those interior walls to the exact positions I want them to be in. In this case, instead of using these automatically generated exterior dimensions, I want to manually draw some interior dimensions. And in order to make the plan a little bit easier to read, I'm going to temporarily turn off the display of my exterior dimensions. To do that, I'm going to open up my Active Layer Display Options window. And you can access that window from this icon over here on the right-hand side. You can also go to the View menu and choose the option that says Active Layer Display Options. I'll click on that now. And when I do that, that's going to bring up a list of all of the layers that are in this plan. In this case, I want to turn off the layer that my automatically generated exterior dimensions are on. To find out what layer these objects are on, I'm simply going to click on one of those dimensions. When I do that, the Active Layer Display Options list updates to show me just the layers of the object that I have selected. And when I turn off the display of that layer, any object that is on that layer is no longer going to display in the plan. So in this case, the layer Dimensions Automatic is selected, and I have this check mark in the display column here. That means this layer is displayed. Objects on this layer are visible. So if I remove this checkbox, notice my automatic dimensions go away. 
Now what I want to do is I want to manually draw in some dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and select my manual dimension tool. I'm also going to turn off my active layer display options window. To draw a dimension in Chief Architect, I always start outside of the object that I want to dimension. Chief Architect is very forgiving in that regard, so I don't need to be precisely on the wall when I draw the dimension in. For example, if I want to draw a dimension from top to bottom in the living room, I can actually start in the kitchen and click and drag my mouse through the living room past the exterior wall to generate a dimension line. Once a number displays, that means a dimension has been generated and I can release my mouse. Now in this particular case, the dimension that gets generated is going from the inside of my wall framing to the outside of my exterior wall framing. And that's not the dimension that I want, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to delete it. What I want instead is I want an interior dimension. So I'm going to grab my interior dimension tool over here on my tool palette, and I'm going to click and drag again from the kitchen through the living room down to the bottom wall. And notice that generates a dimension from the inside of my framing to the inside of my framing. Now I can use that dimension to move walls just like I did with my associated dimensions previously. If I select this wall here, I can click on this dimension here and type in a new value. Though you'll notice that I have this entire wall selected, but I only want this portion of the wall to change position. What I can do is I can add a break to this wall and move just this portion of the wall down. To do that, with the wall selected, on my edit toolbar is an icon that says break. So I'll click on the break tool. I'll come over here and I will click on the wall. And now that wall has been divided into two separate sections. And notice I didn't really care so much where I put the break as long as I put it at this intersection. Because then what I can do is I can click on this dimension here and type in the new value, in this case 11 foot 5. And I'll hit enter on my keyboard. And that's going to move that wall down to exactly 11 feet 5 inches from the inside of the exterior wall. And now notice I had the interior wall selected. If I had the exterior wall selected and changed this value, then the exterior wall would move and the distance between these two walls would still be 11 feet 5 inches, but my exterior dimensions would no longer be accurate. It is always important to pay attention to what object you have selected when you're using dimensions, because whatever object you have selected, that's the object that's going to move and change position. So far we've only drawn in one dimension covering one single area. You can have a string of dimensions all dimensioned together. If I use the interior dimension tool again, I'm going to click and drag again from the outside all the way across to the outside of the model on the other side. So I'll start over here, I'll click and I'll drag, and release my mouse. And now we have a new set of dimensions that are all tied together in one dimension string. Now this particular dimension, this 12 foot 5 for the garage here, is a little bit hard to see. So what I can do is I can click on this dimension line here, and you'll notice I have this very large square on this dimension line. That is the move edit handle for this dimension line. So what I can do is I can click and drag on that dimension line and drag it down and make those numbers a little bit easier to see. And just like before, I can use my dimensions to move the walls into the proper position. So I'll click on this wall here, type in a new value, and hit enter on my keyboard. I'll slowly but surely work my way through the process. Now, I've moved this wall to be 13 feet from the exterior wall. The dimension that comes after that, I want that to be 12 feet 7 and a half inches. So I'm going to click on the dimension value here and type 12 feet 7 and a half inches and hit enter on my keyboard. When I do that, notice that this dimension here is no longer 13 feet even. This is again an example of making sure that you have the proper wall selected and moved into the right position. So again, I'm going to take this wall and click on this dimension here and set that back to 13 feet. And then enter on my keyboard. 
So notice again, I'm fighting back and forth with these two dimensions. Once this wall is in the proper position, I'm not going to mess with it again. I'm going to go over to the next wall and change the position for this wall. So I'll click on that dimension and type 12 feet, seven and a half inches and hit enter on my keyboard. And that will move that to the exact position. These other two dimensions are exactly the dimensions that I want. We're good to go. Now, one more change I need to make in this plan is this wall here and this wall here. These two walls that are covering over the garage, they need to be fire rated walls. So to do that, I need to break the wall here and I need to break the wall here and turn these walls into fire rated drywall walls. So with this wall selected, I'm going to click on the break wall tool and put a break here. Then with this wall selected, I'm going to click on the break wall tool and place a break right here. Now with this wall selected, I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I'm going to click on the opposite wall that I just broke. And I want to change both of these walls into a different wall structure. To do that, I'm going to come over here and click on open object. And if I go to the wall types panel, I'm now modifying both of these walls at the same time. And you'll notice this wall type option here says no change. Whenever you see something that says no change, that means you have multiple objects that are selected and the value here is different between each of those objects. So what we can do in this case is I want to take both of these objects and change them to a different wall type. So if I come down here to this drop down menu and choose in this case fire six, what that's going to do is that's going to take these walls and change them from their six inch exterior wall and their four inch interior wall and change them to a six inch fire rated wall. If I click the define button, you can see how this wall is put together. I have my fire rated drywall on top, then I have a 24 inch on center spacing stud that's a two by six, and then I have a half inch of drywall on the bottom. And you can modify these wall types to be different wall types if you wanted to add additional layers or change the thicknesses of the walls. So if you wanted this to be a two by four, for example, instead of a two by six, you can change the thicknesses here for each of these individual walls. For now, I'm going to leave these values where they're at and go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK again. If I zoom in a little closer here, I'm going to use my zoom tool right here, and I'm going to click and drag to highlight just this area. You'll notice I have this red section here on the outside of the wall. Now that red section is my fire rated drywall, and that should actually be facing into my garage. So what I can do is I can reverse these layers or swap the layers in the wall. I'm going to select one wall, and again I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the other wall. And down on the bottom toolbar, I'm going to click on this icon right here that says reverse layers. That's going to reverse the wall layers and get the wall layers looking in the right spot. So I'll go ahead and click that. And I'll hit the space bar key on my keyboard. And now I have my fire rated drywall on the inside of the room. From here, I'm going to go ahead and draw two more additional dimension lines. So again, I'll go back to my dimension tools and click on interior dimension. And I want to draw a dimension here and I want to draw a dimension here. Again, these dimensions are looking a little hard to read, so I'm gonna click on this dimension here, and I'm gonna drag this dimension out so we can see it a little bit easier to the side here. And again, just like before, I can then start using my dimensions to move the walls into the proper position. So I'll take this wall here, I'm gonna type in a new value for it. I want this one to be 21 foot seven. I'll hit enter on my keyboard. I want this wall here. I want this one to be five foot one. And then I want that to be 10 feet. Next, I'm going to click on this wall here. And I want this master bath to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to change this, select this dimension right here, change this to be nine foot seven. Now I want this closet to actually be five feet even. So I'm going to click on this dimension Select this wall, click on this dimension, and change that to be exactly five feet. 
Last thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this bump out here in the closet. I want this wall to actually come down here. So again, I'll add another break to this wall. And I'm going to drag this wall down until it lines up with that fire rated wall in the garage. Now you'll notice I can tell it's lined up because of that red X that's showing directly to the right of my mouse. That red X is what's called a snap indicator. And that snap indicator tells me that I've snapped to the edge of that wall. So now I can simply release my mouse and that wall has now moved down into position. A few more things we need to do here to finish out detailing our house. I'm going to take this wall and I'm going to break it into two sections. So I'll click on that wall and click on the break wall tool again. I want to form a closet right here with an entry for my garage right here. So I'm going to take this edit handle right here, this square edit handle. I'm going to drag it down. And now I want to add a new wall across here. Now I could go and grab my wall tool and then grab this wall and draw it across. Or while I've got this wall selected, I also have this diamond edit handle right here. And this diamond edit handle is known as the same as type edit handle. And what this allows me to do is this allows me to click and drag a new wall segment that's the same type of wall as the wall that I have selected. So I simply click on that same as type edit handle and drag over here. And I now have another interior wall drawn right here. I'll draw one more interior dimension in here. Move that out so we can see it a little bit clearer. Then I'll select this top wall here and change that value to be exactly seven feet. And now we've detailed the interior of our house. Last thing we want to do is we want to clean up these room labels. Since we've started moving walls around, room labels are no longer centered on the room. So we can use some different tools to center those room labels and make this look a little bit nicer. For example, I can click on the master bath here. And if I want to center that room label in the master bath room, what I can do is I can come down to the edit toolbar and I have this icon here that looks like two blue arrows pointing at each other. That's the center object tool. So if I click on that, I'm going to move my mouse into the plan here and you'll notice that I get this dashed line kind of showing up here as I move my mouse around. This dashed line is showing me the center point that the center of whatever object I have selected is going to line up with. So in this case, I want it to center directly in this room. So when I click, that master bath text is going to move to exactly the center of that dashed line. So I simply click and move it to the center. I can do the same thing horizontally as well. I'll go ahead and do that with the rest of the plan. When it comes to this closet label, I want to center it in the room, but I also want to rotate it so it's horizontal in the room and much easier to read. So I'm going to click on the label, click on the center object to move it to the center of the closet room. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rotate edit handle here to click and drag and rotate it 90 degrees so that it's horizontal in the closet. I'll then use my center object tool and center it horizontally in the room as well. One last thing I want to do with the interior walls here is I want to have an open space between the entry area and the dining area. I want that to be one completely open space, but I still want to have these two rooms defined as separate rooms. So to do that, I can take this wall and I'm going to click on the button down here that says make invisible. And what that's going to do is that's going to take that wall and make it so that it still defines the rooms, still gives us two rooms, but there's no physical wall separating those two rooms, so it'll be a nice open breezeway between the two of them. You'll notice up to this point, we've strictly been working with the first floor. Normally in construction, you would start with building the foundation and then build up from there. 
With the way the Chief Architect works, you start by drawing the first floor first, and then every floor is going to be based on that exterior shape of the first floor, both the foundation as well as any additional floors above it. So to add a foundation to a model, we're simply going to go to the Build menu, come down to Floor, and choose the Build Foundation option. I can also access my floor tools from the toolbar. So I click on Floor Tools and click on Build Foundation. Now in the window that comes up here, I'm going to start by checking this checkbox that says Automatically Rebuild Foundation. And what that will do is every time I make a change to my plan, every time I move a wall, every time I change a cabinet, Chief Architect is going to look at the plan and see if it needs to update or change the position or location of the foundation. If it does, it will. If it doesn't, it will leave it where it's at. So by having that checked, the Chief Architect is automatically going to keep that foundation in a position for us. We have several different foundation types that you can build with, either walls with footings, grade beam on piers, or monolithic slab. In this particular case, we're going to use the walls with footing option. Next option we can choose is how thick is our slab going to be. Is it going to be 4 inches, 6 inches, 8 inches? You can decide that there. We also have our important option of how tall is our foundation going to be. The stem wall section is specifically going to talk about walls that are going to be built with our foundation. The minimum height value is how tall is the foundation wall going to be, including your 1.5 inch sill plate and the thickness of your slab. So that's going to measure from the top of your footing through the slab all the way up to the top of the sill plate that's built on top of your foundation wall. In this example, I want to build a full height foundation with an 8 foot ceiling. I'm going to change my minimum stem wall height to 101 and an eighth to account for the 4 inch thickness of the slab. So you'll notice here my basement ceiling height is now set to 97 and an eighth of an inch. I can also come down here and specify how my garage slab is going to build. In this case, we're going to have the garage slab one foot down from the top of the stem wall, but the total stem wall height of the garage stem wall is going to be 24 inches. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and Chief Architect has generated a foundation for us. Now it may look like our plan has gone away, but what has actually happened is we've changed floors in our plan. Up in my toolbar, you'll notice I have these up and down arrows with this zero in the middle. These are my floor level controls. Right now I'm currently on floor zero, but if I hit the up arrow, that's going to take us back to floor one. And now I'm back on my first floor where I've made my changes. If I go back down to floor zero, I'm going to be back on my foundation level. You'll also notice these S markers here. Those indicate a step in the foundation where the stem wall height has changed between the rooms. So we have our normal stem wall heights here, and then because we had our garage defined as a garage room, Chief knew to automatically make this a 24 inch high stem wall with the slab 12 inches below the top of the stem wall. In this foundation room, I want to have a crawl space in this area over here, and I want to have a full height basement over here. I want to have my crawl space line up with a wall on the floor above. So what I can do here is I can turn on what's called my reference display here, and that's going to show me an outline of all the walls that are on the floor above, and I want this wall to line up exactly right here. Now I could try to manually draw the wall in, or I can have Chief generate the wall for me. How I would do that is if I go up to floor 1, I'm going to select this wall and open it for specification. And on the structure panel, down towards the bottom here, I have this checkbox that says bearing wall. Now Chief Architect is going to take that wall and use it as a bearing wall when we start talking about framing. It's going to have those joists lap or butt over that wall based on the settings that we specify. Also notice when I checked that checkbox, this option here for create wall slash footing below also got checked. So when I click OK on that and go down to my foundation level, notice Chief Architect has generated a new foundation wall here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my reference display to make that a little bit easier to see. And now that I've done that, I now have two separate rooms. 
anytime you want to make a platform change, whether it be floor height, floor finish, things of that nature, they need to be defined as two separate rooms. In this case, I want to take the room that I have selected and I want to turn it into a crawl space. So I'm going to open that room for specification. I'm going to go to the structure panel. And I'm going to change this stem wall height from 101 and an eighth to 36 inches. Now when I hit the tab key on my keyboard, notice Chief is going to give me a message here saying, hey, this operation modifies a wall or room on the foundation. Without a rebuild foundation turned on, your changes will be lost. Would you like to turn off auto rebuild foundation and continue with the operation? The answer is yes. What Chief is basically saying at this point is you're doing something that is not the default that we set when we first set the foundation up. And Chief is saying, if you do this, I'm no longer going to be able to automatically adjust the foundation. Do you want me to stop doing that so you can make this change? And the answer is yes, we do want Chief to stop rebuilding the foundation so we can make the change we want to make. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. Again, I'm going to change that value to 36 inches. Now notice in our diagram here over on the right hand side, our preview on the right hand side, that's updated to show our new difference here. And we can zoom in a little bit closer and see how that looks. I also want to go ahead and get rid of the floor under this. I want my crawl space to be open to dirt. So to do that, down on the bottom here, I have this checkbox that says floor under this room. I'll simply uncheck that checkbox and that's going to remove the slab from that area. I also want to get rid of my ceiling finish. Right now I have a ceiling finish that's tacked to the bottom of my floor joists on the first floor, and I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click on this edit button here for ceiling finish, and I'm going to delete these layers. And I'll click OK. And notice our preview on the right is updated to show that it no longer has those ceiling finish layers. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now notice we have a new S here where we've got a new step in our foundation. Now if I wanted to see what this looks like and verify that my foundation has built the way that I want it to be built, what I can do is I can do a floor overview. To access that, I'm going to go to this camera tool here and I'm going to click on this option here that says perspective floor overview. I'll click on that and that will bring up a preview of what just this floor looks like. So we can see where we have my garage area here, I have my full height basement here, and then I have my crawl space over here. I'm going to go ahead and close this view by clicking on this X right here, and that'll close out of that view. Now that we've added a foundation, let's go ahead and add a second floor. Again, I'm going to go back to my floor tools, and I'm going to click on the Build New Floor button. When we first click on this button, it's going to come up and ask us a very important question. It's going to ask if we want to derive the second floor shape from the first floor, or do we want to make a new blank second floor that we can then draw on ourselves. I always recommend choosing Derive New Second Floor Plan from the First Floor Plan. This will make sure that all of the walls on the second floor are properly aligned with the walls below and building correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that option selected and go ahead and click OK. Next, it's going to come up and it's going to ask us, how tall do we want our second floor ceilings to be? Notice we have again our rough and finished ceilings values here are set to 97 and an eighth and 95 and 5 eighths respectively. This tells us that on the second floor it's going to generate an 8 foot tall ceiling. We'll go ahead and click OK on that. And now we're on floor 2. You can tell that by our floor controls here. And notice the second floor shape matches perfectly the shape of our first floor. Now I want to draw another wall in on the second floor on top of the bearing wall we set on the first floor. So again I'm going to turn on my reference display. And so I want to draw another wall right on top of this wall here. So to do that I'm going to go back to my wall tools parent tool and click on my straight interior wall tool. And then I'm going to move my mouse into position and click and drag and draw the wall in and release my mouse. Now you'll notice in my screen here, when I drew that wall in, the red lines that were underneath that wall went away and they were replaced with some bright turquoise lines. Those turquoise lines tell me that they're built exactly on top of each other. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can see what we're talking about here. 
these green lines right here means that the lines below are exactly aligned with the lines that are currently here. If I take this wall, I'm going to drag it to the left a little bit here. I can see my red lines here, and I can also see the black lines of my existing wall. Now, if I select this wall again, you'll also notice that I have this icon here down on the bottom toolbar that says Align with Wall Below. If you ever see that icon, that means that Chief Architect thinks that the wall that you have selected isn't perfectly aligned with the wall below. If you see that there, you simply click with your mouse, and Chief Architect will move that wall into position for you. Notice once it's perfectly aligned, that toolbar button is no longer visible. That toolbar button will only show up if the walls are close but not perfectly aligned. If I take this wall and move it completely off of the wall below it, I also am not going to get that Align with Wall Below button. In order for that tool to show up, Chief Architect needs to see that the walls are close but not perfectly aligned. So if again, if I click on this wall and drag it back so it's kind of over the wall, you'll see I have that icon that shows back up there, and I can click the button and align it perfectly with the wall below. Now that we've created multiple floors in our plan, let's talk about how to get between those floors. The stair tool in Chief Architect is designed to be easily used so you can get access to those different floors. We've designed it to give you a lot of information so you know exactly what it is you're doing when you're building your stairs. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my stair tool. In this simple example plan I've drawn, I'm going to show you different ways that you can use stairs to gain access to different floors. The first tool under the Stair Tool Parent button is the Draw Stairs tool. How that tool works is I simply can click and drag with my mouse and draw a set of stairs. I'm going to select those stairs and delete them. I can also just simply click with the Draw Stair tool, and Chief Architect will automatically generate a staircase that reaches the next floor level, like this. But if I want to have control over how those stairs are generated, I can use this draw stair tool to draw in different stair sections. So for example, if I'm going to draw an L-shaped set of stairs, but I only want three stair treads on the lower floor, and then maybe I want the rest of the treads to go up to the next floor, I can simply draw three treads here, and then I can move my mouse over here and draw another set of treads right here. When I do that, I now have two separate stair sections. What I can do, though, is with the stair tool still active, I can come down here to where a landing would be, and I can simply click with my mouse, and Chief Architect will automatically generate a landing for me. Not only do I have a landing generated, but now I have the stairs that are connected to that landing going up to the next level. Now, how can I know that these stairs have made it up to the next level? we can open the stairs for specification. So I'll click on this staircase here and click on the Open Object button, and that's going to bring up my staircase specification. The first thing you'll notice here, the very first line, Steep Staircase Reaches Next Level. What this is telling me is my staircase does reach the next level if I have a really steep riser height. In this case, you'll notice here it says my riser height is 7 and 5 eighths. Chief Architect also gives us its recommendations for the best fit riser height. In this case, it's 6 and 3 quarters. That says it requires a total of 18 risers to reach the next level. Keep in mind that Chief Architect includes steps up to landings and steps up to the next platform as risers as well. We currently have a total of 16 risers. But what I can do is I can click this button that says Make Best Fit and Chief Architect will automatically add additional risers to make the best fit riser height. So I'll click that button now, and when I do that, Chief Architect now tells me that the staircase reaches the next level. I'll go ahead and click OK, and now we can see that the staircase does indeed reach the next level. I can do the same thing with U-shaped stairs. I'll select the stairs and delete them. I'll again draw a set of stairs going this way. The thing to note is when you're drawing stairs, you left click and drag, and the initial click is your starting point. That's going to be the low point for your stairs. 
and you're dragging in the upward direction. So you're starting on the floor below, then dragging up to the floor above. In this case, now that I have my stairs drawn here, I want to put a landing right here. So again, with my staircase tool still active, I'll simply click where the landing would be, and Chief Architect will automatically generate a landing for me. Now we do have some automatic stair tools that do this for us. I'm going to go ahead and select these stairs and delete them. Over here on the left hand side we do have an L-shaped and U-shaped stairs. This is going to ask us what direction do we want these stairs to go, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Also this counts for U-shaped stairs and gives us an option to fill in how big of a gap we want between those stairs. Go ahead and click OK here. And now when I move my mouse in you'll notice I have my up arrow pointing in the upslope direction. As I move my mouse closer to a wall, Chief Architect is automatically going to adjust my stairs to fit against those walls. As I move my mouse closer, notice what happens to the up arrow. That up arrow shifts sides and goes to the other side. When I'm in the corner, I can move my mouse to either corner for the up arrow. Once I have those stairs set up the way that I want them to be, I simply click with my mouse and Chief Architect will generate a set of stairs for me. I can do the same thing with the U-shaped stairs. Again, move my mouse, for example, into a corner. Whichever side I move my mouse closest to, that's what's going to give me my upslope. So I'll simply click again and place a set of U-shaped stairs. The difference between the U and L-shaped stairs tools and the draw stairs is that the U and L-shaped stairs are going to set staircases that are of equal size. You can go and customize these further if you want to, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Back in our sample plan, if I wanted to create a set of stairs that go from my garage up to my entry area, I simply need to choose my stair tool, grab the draw stairs, and then I'm simply going to click where I want the stairs to be. So I'll simply click right here, and notice that Chief automatically generates a set of stairs that go from the floor platform of the first floor, or the garage in this case, up to the floor platform of the main floor. Chief automatically detected that there is a floor platform height difference and then automatically generated a set of stairs for me. Well, that's great for getting from our garage back to the entry area, we still don't have a set of stairs going from our first floor up to our second floor. To do that, I'm again going to go to my Stair Tools Parent button, then click on the Draw Stairs tool, and I'm going to start by simply drawing a simple set of stairs. I know that this isn't going to reach the floor above, and that's okay. I'm going to have Chief take care of this automatically for me, but I want to make some changes first. I've drawn my stairs in place, and in this case, I want to make sure that my stairs are exactly 4 feet from this wall. So to do that, I'm going to grab my Dimension tool, and draw a dimension from this wall to the stairs. Now notice this dimension is going from the outside edge of my wall up to my stairs. I want this going from the inside edge of my wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this dimension, and when I do that you'll notice I have some diamond edit handles that show up here. The diamond edit handle I'm interested in is the one at the bottom here. I'm going to zoom in on that. Notice when I've got this selected, the diamond edit handle is sitting right on the outside edge of my wall main layer, in this case my wall's framing layer. I want this measuring from the inside edge of my wall framing layer. So to do that, I'm simply going to grab the diamond edit handle, and I'm going to drag that to the inside edge of my wall's framing layer. Once I've done that, I'm going to zoom back out. And you'll see that my dimension is now set to 4 feet 2 and a half inches. So I simply click on my stairs, and then click on the dimension and change that to exactly 4 feet, and hit enter on my keyboard. Now that I've done that, I can open my stairs for specification and make some additional adjustments to it. Notice right now the staircase does not reach the next level, and that's okay. Before we start adjusting its dimensions, we want to make some changes to it. First thing I want to do is I want to change its width. I want this to be, instead of 39 inches wide, I want it to be 44 inches wide. On the style panel, I can choose exactly if I want it to be open underneath or have open risers. In this case, I want to leave these where they're at. On the 
Newell's and Ballister's panel, I want to change the type of railing that I'm using. Currently, I'm just using a generic square, but if I hit the library button here, I can choose a different railing style to use. So if I browse through my library real quick, I'll go and find the railing that I want to use. I want to choose this one that says BX02. I'll go ahead and select that and click OK. Now I want these to actually stick up through my railing, so I'm going to uncheck this checkbox that says Rail Passes Over Newell. Then I'm going to change the height from 42 inches to 44 inches. Last thing I want to do is I want to adjust the materials on these stairs. So if I go to the Materials panel, I can change what materials my stairs are using. In this case, I want to change my baluster color if I click on balusters, but I also want to change my railing color at the same time. So in this case, I can select balusters and rails by holding down the shift key on my keyboard. And then I can click the select material button, and that will bring up a browse window to allow me to find different materials to use. In this case, I want to do a search for color bone. I'll select that material and I'll go ahead and click OK. I also want to change the material from my Newell post. So I'll click on that. I'll click on the Select Material button. And since I've already found that color bone material before, instead of doing a search in the library for it, I can go to my plan materials and choose color bone right here. The plan materials lists all of the different materials that are already in use in the plan. The other thing I want to do is I want to change what color my treads are. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my tread, and then I'm going to click on Select Material, and I want to use a birch material. I'm going to use this birch 5-inch plank weathered. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. Now that's updated my stairs. There's one last thing that we need to do back in my stair tools here. So we need to have Chief make our best fit stair. So to do that, I'm going to click the Make Best Fit button. Chief Architect has two very important options here, either the Lock Top option or the Lock Bottom option. These options choose which end of the staircase is going to stay where it's at and which end is going to extend or move or change position. In this case, I want to make sure that Lock Bottom is selected because we moved our bottom of our stairs to the exact position we want them to be in. With the Lock Bottom option selected, the bottom of the stairs will stay where they're at, and the top will extend out to meet the second floor. Now that I've done all this, I'll go ahead and click OK. And notice my bottom of my stairs stayed where they're at, and the top extended up. If we take a look at this in a camera view, I can select my camera tool here, and I'll choose the full camera option. I'm going to click with my mouse and drag in the direction I want my camera to look, and I'll release my mouse. When I do that, you'll notice we have one very important problem. We don't have a hole created for our stairs. That's very simple to do. While I'm here in the 3D view, I'm going to click on my staircase, and down on the bottom toolbar, I have this icon that says Auto Stairwell. If I click on that button, Chief Architect is automatically going to create a stairwell up on the floor above that is the exact same shape of the stairs that I've generated. If I go back to Plan View, and go up to floor two, you'll see that I now have a new room called a stairwell up on floor two. Now that we've added stairs to our plan, we can customize it further with doors and windows. To add doors, I'm simply going to go to my door tools parent button, then I'll click on the hinge door tool, and then I'll simply click in the wall to place it. One thing to note is doors and windows have to be placed in a wall. They cannot be placed independently of a wall. Once I've placed the door, I can select it, and I can change things like the swing side and hinge side. If I click on the Change Swing Side button here, that will change the swing side. If I change the Hinge Side button here, I can change which side my hinge is on. I can also open this door for specification and make additional adjustments to it. 
For example, if I wanted to choose a different door style, maybe from the library, I can click the library button here and choose a different door style. For example, let's say this one. I'll select it and click OK. On the casing panel, I can choose a different casing profile to use. On the hardware panel, I can also adjust my interior and exterior handles, locks, and hinges. I'll go ahead and click OK. I want to add some side lights to this door. To do that, I'm going to use my Fixed Door tool. That's again under my Door Tools Parent button, and choose Fixed Door. I'm going to simply select this door and click to place it in the plan. Now I want to customize this door a little bit more, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to click on Open Object. And when I do that, you'll see that this door is designed to specifically be a side light door. And in this case, I want to actually add some lights to this, so I'm going to go to the Lights panel, and I'm going to add some vertical lights. I'll add six in this case. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK, and my door has been updated. If I look at this in a camera view, we can see I've added my side lights to my door. I'm going to tile my views by going to the window menu and choosing the option that says Tile Vertically. This will allow me to see my plan on one side and my 3D view on the other. Back in my plan view, I want to take the side light that I've created and I want to duplicate it onto the other side of this door. Now I could simply go back to my door parent tool, grab the fixed door tool and place it here. Or I can take the door that I've already made and make a copy of it on the other side of this door. To do that, I'm going to select my fixed door, then down on my bottom toolbar, I'm going to click on Copy Paste, and then choose the option that says Reflect About Object. What this will do is this will take the copy that I have and it's going to reflect it to the other side of this dashed line that's here in my plan. Once I have that dashed line in the center of my door, I simply click and Chief Architect will automatically take my side light and reflect it over to the other side. I'm going to close my camera view. From here I want to add a door into the back area. In this case, I want this to be a double glass panel door that's going to go out to a deck I'm going to add later. To do that, I'm going to start by grabbing my hinge door tool, and I'm going to place it in the plan. I'm going to single click on the door here, and I want to take this door from a single door to a double door. So to do that, I'm simply going to put my mouse on this side edit handle here and drag to the right. And at a certain point, Chief Architect is going to automatically convert that from a single to a double door. Go ahead and drag that out there. To be more precise, I can open that door for specification and say I want this to be exactly 72 inches wide. I'm also going to come in here and change the door style from the default to a glass panel. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK, and that will automatically update. Now I want this door to be centered directly in the middle of my kitchen room here. So to do that, with this door selected, I'm going to come down here to this icon that says Center Object. When I move my mouse back into the plan, you'll notice I have a dashed line following my mouse. That dashed line is where the center of whatever object I have selected is going to line up. In this case, I want the center of the door to line up exactly on that dashed line in the middle of the kitchen room here. So now that I've got my dashed line in the correct place, I'll simply click, and that door is now centered exactly on that room. I also want these doors to open inward instead of outward, so I'm going to change the swing side from the outside to the inside. I'm going to go and place some other doors in my plan here. One other thing to note here, as I'm placing doors in my plan, I haven't clicked yet, but notice Chief Architect has already made the door open up and to the right. I want my hinge side to be on the opposite side. Now I could simply click to place the door, and then go down and use the swing side edit handles like we've done before. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to click with my mouse and hold my mouse down 
And when I move my mouse down, notice that Chief Architect automatically switches the hinge side for me. If I move my mouse to the left a little bit, it now does a swing side. And if I move my mouse up again, it goes back to the hinge side. So I can hold down my left mouse button to choose the swing and hinge side of my door before I ever actually place it. Once it's looking the way that I want it to look, I'll simply release my mouse and it will place it the way that I want it to be placed. Just like with the doors in the kitchen, if I take my bifold doors and I stretch them out wide enough, they'll eventually become double doors. And again, I'll center that on the closet. Just like with doors, windows need to be placed in walls. If I go to my Window Tool Parent button, I can click on my Window Tool, and then simply come down to a wall and click to place it in the plan. Now I want to modify this window a little bit, so I'm going to select the window and open it for specification. I'm going to start by changing its width to 30 inches and its height to 60 inches. I also want to add some lights. So I'm going to have three lights across and two lights vertical. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And now my window has been updated. Now I'm going to place my next window. So I'll go ahead and click to place it. And again, notice this window went back to the default window, 32 inches wide and 48 inches high with no lights. I want to make it so that all of my windows are like the first window that I placed here. I can do that by adjusting my default settings. I'm going to go to this wrench icon here in my toolbar. I'm going to come down to Window, and I'm going to click the Edit button. And now I'm going to change my default window to be the type of window that I want to make. Your defaults are essentially your starting points. What the object is going to look like when it first gets placed in the plan. You don't have to stick with these defaults after it's been placed in the plan. You can change the window, or object, whatever it happens to be, afterwards to be what you need it to be. In this case, I'm going to change my width to 30 inches and my height to 60 inches, and I'm going to go ahead and add some lights. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK, and I'll click on Done. Notice that the window that I've placed in the plan has not updated. However, if I go back to my Window tool and place a new window, Notice that is now following the new defaults. So I simply can take this window, I'll delete it, and I'll place the new window that's now following my existing defaults. If I want to take these windows and make sure that they are the exact same distance apart from each other and are centered in the plan, I can do that several different ways. I'm going to start by turning on my temporary dimensions. That's this icon over here on the right-hand side. And when I click on these windows here, you'll see I have a dimension that shows up. With my right hand window selected, I'm going to click on this dimension here, and I want these windows to be exactly three feet apart. So I'll type in three feet, hit the enter key on my keyboard, and those windows are now exactly three feet apart. From here, what I can do is I can select, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and select this window. And now what I can do is I can center both of those windows exactly on the room. To do that, I'm going to come down again to the center object tool, and move my mouse so that the center point is exactly in the room there, and I'll simply click. And those windows have now been adjusted so they are exactly centered on that room, but still are three feet apart. I'm going to do the same thing with this window here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to center it on the room and move it into position. In my kitchen area here, I have an example of some windows that I want to place in the plan that are not going to be the default. To do this, I'm going to start by placing my default window. I'll click to place the default window, and then I'm going to open it, and I'm going to change its specifications. These windows are going to be sitting over the sink in my kitchen. So I want this window to be 
28 inches wide and 36 inches tall. And instead of it being a double hung, I want this to be a single casement window. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And that's placed one window here. Now what I can do is I can make another copy on the other side of this window. To do that, with that window selected, I'm going to click on the Copy Paste button. And instead of doing a point-to-point -point move or, or anything like that, I'm simply going to take my mouse and put it over this window here. And I'm going to simply drag that copy off. And now I have two windows. I'm then going to take this window and bump it into the first one here. And then I want to take the window that I've made and reflect it over to the other side. So again, I'm going to click on Copy Paste. And just like we did with the side lights of the door, I'm going to click on the Reflect About. And I'm going to reflect it about the center of this window here and click to place it on the other side. Now I want to make sure that all three of these windows are centered on my kitchen. So again, I'll select one, hold down the shift key, select the other two, and then I'll click on the center object button and center them on my kitchen room. You'll notice up to this point, I've been going and group selecting these windows in order to make changes to them. I'm gonna go ahead and place three more windows here as the default windows. Place one here, place one here right next to it, and one more. Now these windows are all butted together, but I want them to actually be a mold unit, to be one individual object here. So to do that, I'm going to again select each window, by clicking on one, holding down the shift key on my keyboard and clicking on the other two. And down on my bottom toolbar here, I have this icon that says make mold unit. When I click on it, those windows now have become one object. So when I click on that object, I can now move it back and forth just by clicking on that one object. And again, I can then take these and center them directly on the dining room. I'll go ahead and finish placing the rest of the windows in my plan. Continuing with our plan, we want to add a deck to the back of the house. Drawing a deck is very similar to drawing other walls in the house. There is a specific tool, however, that is used for making decks. To find that tool, I'm going to go under my railing tools, and I'm going to choose the straight deck railing tool. The straight railing tool is great for indoor railings or other types of railings that are not related to decks. When I make a room using a straight deck railing, the room is automatically going to be generated as a deck. I'm going to come into my plan and I'm going to click and drag and draw my walls out for my deck. Notice once I've connected my rooms together, Chief Architect automatically generates a deck for me. Now I want this deck room to be a specific size. So I'm going to go ahead and select this room here. And then I'm going to click on this dimension here and set this to be exactly 8 feet. Now these side walls, I want to be exactly one foot in from the edge. Now if I click on them, you'll notice I don't have a dimension that comes across here. So what I can do is I can use my manual dimension tool to manually draw in a dimension from here to here. Turn on the display of my manual dimension tools. And then I can simply click on the wall, click on the dimension, and change the value to be exactly one foot. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Once I have the railings in the proper position, I can go ahead and get rid of these extra dimensions that I don't need. I'll simply select on them and press the delete key on my keyboard. Chief Architect makes it very simple to generate several different roof styles automatically. To demonstrate these different roof styles, we're going to use the sample plan I have in front of me. To add a roof to your existing plan, I'm going to go to my Roof Tools Parent button and then click on Build a Roof. The Build Roof dialog allows you to set the starting points or the defaults for all of your roof planes that are going to be built in your plan. 
For now, I'm going to simply check the Auto Rebuild Roofs checkbox, and this is going to make it so every time I make a change in the plan, Chief Architect is going to automatically regenerate the roof planes so that it's up to date with my current model. For now, I'm going to leave the default pitch at 8 and 12, and the default overhangs at 18 inches, and I'll go ahead and click OK. When a roof first gets built, by default, it's going to be a hip roof. You can come in and manually modify these after the fact to be exactly the type of roof that you want to be. In this case, I want to change this roof from a hip roof to a gable roof. To do that, I'm going to actually make these changes in the individual walls. Walls determine how a roof is going to build over the walls. For example, I want to put a gable over this wall. So what I'm going to do is I have that wall selected. Down on the bottom toolbar, I have this icon that says Change to Gable Walls. So I'll simply click on that, and that will turn that wall into a gable wall. I'll do the same thing on this wall over here, and I now have a gable roof. If I wanted to change this, for example, to a Dutch gable instead of a standard gable, I'm going to select both of these walls and make the change at the same time. So I'll click on one wall, hold down the Shift key, and click on the other wall. And then I'm going to click on the Open Object button. And when I do that, I'll have several different wall specification options. In this case, I want to go to the roof panel because I'm going to make changes to how the roof builds over these walls. Instead of these walls being full gable walls, I want them to be Dutch gable walls. So I'll click on the Dutch gable wall option, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now you'll see Chief Architect has automatically generated a Dutch gable wall. I'm going to reset my roof settings back to their defaults. To do this, I'm going to go to the Edit menu and click on Reset to Defaults. And then I'm going to choose the option that says Roof Directives in Walls and click OK. Now that I'm back to my default settings, I want to make a shed roof. I'm going to have my lower portion of the shed here and the high portion of my shed here. To do this, I'm again going to take these two side walls. Again, select one wall, hold down the shift key and click on the other wall. And I'm going to turn these into gable walls. Next, I'm going to take this top wall and I'm going to open it for specification. And on the roof panel, instead of this being a hip wall, I want this to be a high shed gable wall. So I'm going to choose the High Shed Gable Wall option, and I'm going to click OK. You'll notice when I changed that wall to a High Shed Gable Wall, it made the pitch of that roof extremely steep. In this case, it's an 8 and 12 pitched roof. I want that to be something closer to a 3 and 12. If I want to change the pitch of this roof, I can change it in the wall that's the hip wall. The hip wall controls the pitch of the roof that is resting on it. This is the wall that's marked as my hip wall, and I can verify that if I open this wall for specification and go to the roof panel. And notice this wall is marked as a hip wall. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this pitch from 8 to 3, and then I'm going to click OK. And now Chief Architect has generated a shed roof at a 3 and 12 pitch instead of an 8 and 12 pitch. Let's say I want to make an offset gable roof where my ridge is off-center from the rest of the house. To do that, I'm going to start very similarly to how I make a normal gable wall. I'm going to select the right and left wall, again, selecting one, holding down the Shift key, and selecting another, and then I'm going to choose the Change to Gable Wall option. Once I've done that, I just need to set a different pitch in one of my hip walls versus another hip wall. So if I have this hip wall selected, I'll open it for specification. And on the roof panel, I'm going to change the pitch from 8 and 12 to 3 and 12. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And we have our offset gable. We can verify this by opening up this back wall and open it for specification. And you'll notice on its roof panel, this is set to an 8 and 12 pitch. So by having differing pitches, you can offset the ridge of your roof. 
To make a gambrel style roof, we're going to start very similarly to how we start with the gable roof. I'm going to select both of the side walls and change them to gable walls. Now I'm going to make a modification to both the bottom and the top wall of my plan. So I'm again going to select one wall, hold down the shift key on my keyboard, click on the other wall, and I'm going to open these up for specification. On the roof panel, I'm going to leave these marked as hip walls, but I'm going to change the initial pitch from 8 and 12 to 12 and 12. You'll also notice I have this option here for upper pitch. I'm going to check that checkbox. What upper pitch allows me to do is upper pitch allows me to set a different pitch that's going to come in from the wall. So I'll have my pitch starting out at 12 and 12, and then at some point, which I can determine here, I'm going to have the pitch change from 12 and 12 to 4 and 12. And I'm going to choose this in from baseline value to be 48 inches. And what that simply means is that at 48 inches in from the outside edge of my wall, it's going to switch from a 12-12 pitch to a 4 and 12 pitch. I'll go ahead and click OK, and you can see the results. This is a gambrel style roof. You'll see here we have our first roof plane right up here. And then at four, 48 inches in from the outside edge of my wall, we switch from a 12 and 12 pitch to a 4 and 12 pitch until it meets at the ridge line. To make a half hip roof, we're going to use some of the same tools we used with the gambrel roof. We're going to start by selecting both of these walls on the sides and making them gable walls. Next, we're going to open these walls for specification and go to the roof panel. Again, we're modifying our gable walls. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an upper pitch to these gable walls. We're going to set the upper pitch to be the same pitch as our hip walls, in this case, 8 inches in 12. We're going to set the in from baseline value to be 65 inches and then we'll go ahead and click OK. And so what Chief Architect has done is Chief Architect has moved our in from baseline value in 65 inches from the edge here to then come in and then add that 8 and 12 pitch to our roof planes. The last roof style we're going to look at is a mansard roof. To do that, I'm going to select all four walls Again, by selecting one, holding down the shift key and clicking on the others. Then I'm going to click on open object and go to the roof panel. In the roof panel, I'm going to set the standard pitch to 18 and 12. And then I'm going to add an upper pitch, make that upper pitch 2 and 12, and the in from baseline value 24 inches. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And we now have our mansard style roof. Back in the plan we've been working on, it's time to add a roof. To do this, I'm going to go to my Roof Tools Parent button, then click on the Build Roof dialog. And in the window that comes up, I'm first going to check the checkbox that says Auto Rebuild Roofs, and then I'm going to set my pitch to 6 and 12. And I'll go ahead and click OK. When I do that, Chief Architect automatically generates a hip roof over the entire house. Now you'll notice it put a hip over my garage area here, and I actually want to have a lowered roof over my garage. I want that roof to be just on the first floor. So to do that, I'm going to go from the first floor up to the second floor. I'm going to select this wall here, and I'm simply going to drag this wall back to be in line with this back wall here. And when I do that and release my mouse, notice the roof automatically drops down to the first floor. Chief recognizes that I don't have a wall there, so it builds a roof on the first floor instead of on the second floor. Now I can simply go about changing my roof styles as I see fit. For example, I in this wall, I want this to be a full gable wall, and the same thing with this wall on this end. And then down on the first floor, I want to go ahead and take this wall, and I also want to make this front wall a gable wall. And now I've built my roof exactly the way I want it to be built.
Now that we've created the structural elements of our model, it's time to start doing the interior detail work. If I wanted to do something like change the material for my walls, I can do that either by opening the walls and changing the materials on the materials panel, or while I'm here in a 3D view, I can use our material painter. So I'll click on the material painter icon, and I'm going to do a search for a particular color. In this case, I want color ivory. I'll select color ivory and click OK. Now when I click on a color here, you'll notice down at the bottom of my screen on the edit toolbar, I have several different options here. I can choose component mode to just change the materials for that one component. Object mode will change that material for the entire object. Room mode will change that material for the entire room. Floor will change it for the entire floor. And plan will change it for the entire plan. So for example, in this case, if I want to paint the entire room, I'm going to change the material painter mode to room mode. And then I'm simply going to click on a wall. And that new ivory material has now been applied to my walls. Using that same process, I can change my floor materials. If I go back to my material painter, and I'm going to go to plan materials this time because I'm going to use a material I've already used before. In this case, I want to use that birch 5 inch plank weathered, and I want to apply that to my flooring. So I'll choose that material, I'll click OK. And in this case, I want to apply it to everything on this floor. So I'm going to change from room mode to floor mode. And then when I click on the floor, notice how all of the floors update to that new material. Now that we've adjusted some of the materials in the kitchen, let's start adding some cabinets. I'm going to go to my cabinet tool parent button, and I'm going to choose the base cabinet option. When I move my mouse into plan view, you'll notice I have a little preview of my cabinet following my mouse around. I haven't clicked on anything yet, but as I move my mouse around, that cabinet will follow me and the preview will update. As I get closer to a wall, you may notice that the label and also the little triangle at the top jumps from the bottom up to the top. And that triangle is your face indicator. And what that triangle means is that is the direction that the front face of the cabinet is going to be pointing. In this case, I want this cabinet to be bumped up against this wall facing out into the room this way. So I'll move my mouse right up here against the wall and I'm going to bump it right into the corner. And once I have it where I want it to be, I can simply click and place the cabinet. And notice when I place it here in plan view, it automatically added itself into the 3D view as well. Now I want to take this cabinet and I want to modify this cabinet. I'm going to open this cabinet up for specification. And instead of this being a 24 inch cabinet, I want this to be a 15 inch wide cabinet. So I'll type in 15 inches here, press the tab key on my keyboard, and that will update the preview on the right hand side here. I also want to change this from a door and drawer to a drawer base cabinet. To do that, I'm going to go to the front sides back panel. I'm going to change the side type from use default to custom face. Then I'm going to take this door and change its item type from door to drawer. Last thing I'll do is I'll take this drawer and I'm going to split it horizontally into two equal sized drawers. Once I've done that, I'll click OK and my changes will take effect. I can then take this cabinet and click and drag on the center edit handle to bump it right into the corner. I can then go and place another cabinet very simply, grab the base cabinet tool, click and place another cabinet. Now if I want to place an angle front cabinet, what I can do is I can come down here into the corner, and what I'm going to do is without clicking, I'm simply going to move my mouse closer to the corner. And when I do that, that preview is going to update to be an angle front corner cabinet. Notice I haven't clicked yet, so it hasn't generated in the 3D view. Once I click with my mouse, however, that cabinet has now been generated in the 3D view. From here I can continue to place additional cabinets. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer on these cabinets here. I want to take this cabinet and I want to make it 12 inches. Like with the cabinet I was working with previously, 
I could open it up, type in a new value, and click OK. I can also take the edge of this cabinet and simply drag it down. Chief Architect is designed so that the cabinets will resize in 3 inch increments. If I pay attention to the label as I'm resizing this, I want this for example to be a 12 inch cabinet. So I'll bring it down to a 12 inch cabinet and release my mouse. Continuing on, I can place additional cabinets here. Let's go and I'll go ahead and click to place this one. And I want this cabinet to be 27 inches wide, so I'll click on it and drag it out so it bumps out once, and it's now 27 inches wide. I'll continue to place the rest of my cabinets in the plan. Now I've placed all of my cabinets against the wall. I'd also like to make a kitchen island. To do that, again I'm going to grab my base cabinet tool, and I'm simply going to place this cabinet out in the middle of the room. Now I want the face of my cabinet to be facing the windows, so I'm going to select that cabinet, and I'm going to use my rotate edit handle here to rotate the cabinet around until that triangle, that face indicator, is facing towards the front. And next I'm going to take this cabinet and I'm going to make it 9 inches wide. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this cabinet is set to be exactly 45 inches from this cabinet and 45 inches from this cabinet. I'm going to use my end-to-end -end dimension tool to dimension between these two cabinets. So I'll start at one end and click and drag to the other cabinet. And then I'll drag another dimension down. Once I've got those two dimensions drawn, I'll click on the cabinet and change these values to be 45 inches. So now I know that my cabinet is placed exactly where I want it to be placed. Go ahead and get rid of these dimensions, and then I'm going to go ahead and place another cabinet here on my island. I'll click to place it, and I want this one to be 36 inches wide, and then I'll place another 15 inch cabinet on the other side. Now that I have all of my cabinets placed, I can start placing appliances into my cabinets. To do that, I'm going to go to my library browser, which is this book icon over here on my right. Next I'm going to do a search for some appliances. We'll start with the sink. We'll start with the offset dual level undermount sink. So I simply did a search for offset and selected this sink. And then to place it in the plan, I'm simply going to move my mouse over the cabinet that I want the sink to be placed in. In this case, I want it right here under my center window, so I'll simply click, and the sink's been placed in the plan. Also notice in the 3D view, Chief Architect has automatically cut a hole in the countertop for that kitchen sink. If I want to place a dishwasher next to the cabinet, I can do a search for dishwasher. And I'll go ahead and grab the Chef Series dishwasher here, and I'll simply click in this cabinet and place the dishwasher. I can also add a cooktop. I'll grab this electric cooktop here, and again I'll click on this island cabinet here. If I also wanted to add an oven to this cabinet, I can do a search for that as well. I'll grab the standard single oven, and again I'll simply click on this cabinet to place it. Placing wall cabinets is a very similar process to placing base cabinets. Simply select the wall cabinet tool, and then you can place them and adjust them as needed. Once all the cabinets have been placed, if I wanted to add a molding to this room, I can simply select the room, open it for specification, go to the moldings panel, I'll uncheck the use defaults molding, and I'm going to add a new molding. We'll add a crown molding in this case. So I'm going to expand under the Chief Architect Core Catalogs, Architectural, Moldings, Profiles, and Extrusions, and I'll choose the Crown Molding folder. 
And I like this molding right here. So I'll select that and click OK. Notice this type is set to be a crown molding. Also notice that the horizontal and vertical offsets are set to 0 inches. What that means is that the top of this crown molding is going to rest right against the bottom of the ceiling finish. If I were to add a number to that vertical offset, it would push that molding down a certain amount. In this case, I'm going to leave those both at 0 and click OK. And now I have a crown molding around my kitchen. To add a soffit, I'm simply going to go back under my Cabinet Tools Parent button and choose the Soffit tool. And I'm simply going to get my soffit in the proper position and click to place it. Again, I'll do the same thing here if I wanted to create a corner soffit. I'll click to place that there. Then I can simply take this soffit and stretch it all the way across to meet my corner soffit. You'll notice in the 3D view, if I zoom in a little closer here, that my crown molding is following my soffit. So where the soffit meets the wall, the crown molding is coming out and following the edge of the soffit. You'll also notice that the soffit is still plain drywall, and I want it to match my kitchen walls. I want it to be that ivory color. While I'm here in my 3D view, I can go to my material eyedropper, to select an existing material in the plan, in this case the ivory color, I'll click on it, and you'll notice that changes from the eyedropper to the spray paint can. I'll change my scope to room, then I'll click on my soffit here, and all of the soffits will change to match the color of my walls. Thank you for attending our Chief Architect Bootcamp webinar. Now feel free to use the chat to ask any additional questions you may have. We will be leaving the meeting active for a while so you can make sure to get your questions answered. We try to provide as many resources as possible for you to learn and become more proficient with our programs, whether that's using the built-in help, additional training videos, or our online knowledge base articles. However you learn, we want to help you be successful using our software. Beyond the free training options I just mentioned, we have several other opportunities to learn more about Chief Architect. These include free and paid webinars, on-demand classes, and one-on-one -on -one personal training. If you have yet to purchase a copy of Chief Architect, we have a free trial version available on our website at chiefarchitect.com. Thanks again for attending this Chief Architect Bootcamp webinar and have a great rest of your day.